Yes, now maybe is finally back. Finally, after many months of a break, I decided to come back and continue. So this episode is called First Date. Let's go. So for those that remember my um, podcast, Yes, No, Maybe, used to be actually a column in the Journal Frankfurt. I wrote it for six years and it was about love, dating, relationships, sex, life stuff. And yeah, I thought I would um, make that into a podcast with video. And yeah, so here I am. Very happy to be back. Uh, it's very hot today. Mm. As I was getting ready, I think it's like 36 degrees. As I was getting ready, everything was like melting and flowing. It took me ages just to do my makeup, redo my makeup, and then the studio lights. Yeah. So I want to introduce you guys to the fish. This is my friend, the fishbowl. And I use it for you guys to send me questions. I just go into the fishbowl and randomly choose the fishiest question. I don't see what I'm choosing, but I just go in there and put, put my hand inside the fish. <laughs> I know it sounds naughty. And then I just go, bloop. I take out a piece of paper. This, in this case, it's first dates. So, if you guys have any questions or wish for me to talk about something special on the podcast or just anything, write me a message or write in the comments below and I will put your questions in the fishbowl and we'll see if your fishiest question comes up. <sighs> okay. I'm a little nervous doing this alone. <clears throat> I even prepared something on paper. So, first dates. Ugh, first dates. First dates suck. Dating sucks. It all sucks. The end. Put your comments below. Bye. No, I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Totally kidding. Mm. I have to admit though, <clears throat> when I used to go on first dates, I used to be super, super, super nervous. Like, I don't know, any time, whether it was like dates from Tinder that I have not seen live, or dates um, from some guy that I met on the street or at a club or at a party, I would always, always be nervous. Um, and that really made it like awkward for me and it made it kind of hard and not really somehow just getting already just getting ready made me nervous and then I felt like the first part of the date I maybe was not like really myself I had to um, compensate for my nervousness maybe I talked too much or I don't know but that's a big big point so um, what I learned is, in order not to be nervous, what really helped me is that um, I lowered my expectations because like, I'm, <coughs> I'm a real nerd. Like, I was already projecting, oh my God, this man, oh my God, and we're gonna have this house and we're gonna have this kind of baby together and we're gonna go on these holidays and blah, 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 before we even went out. That is crazy, crazy. And I'm sure I'm not the only one who does that. So basically one day I, I decided like, Galia, chill. Like you're acting like a crazy person. Just don't have any expectations whatsoever. Just pretend you're going out with a friend to have a drink or to have some dinner. And just like, yeah, don't have any expectations. And that really, really helped me. That really helped me to lower the expectations and to lower the nervousness. Um, yeah, another thing that I noticed that was nice for me is when I got ready 
and I made an effort that I wore something nice, something that I like, like my favorite outfit or my lucky outfit. I mean, you guys all have for sure like your favorite dress or your favorite pants that like kind of complement your body and stuff. So I always wore something that I liked, something that I could sit in comfortably, um, something that I could eat in comfortably and just that something that made me look really cute. And my husband, until this day, my husband remembers what I wore on our first date. So in case you guys are thinking, ah, men don't see it anyways, men don't care what we wear, they do see it. Hmm. So yeah, wear something nice. Brush your hair. Yeah. Brushing hair is good. I was on holiday right now for two weeks and I didn't brush my hair at all. So back to the topic. I'm going to tell you now a very beautiful story about my first date with my husband. I'm going to tell you two stories. One story is my lovely date with my husband. And the second story is about a horrible date I once had before my husband. So. Let's go. So, my husband made a date for us on Friday night. And we went to eat tapas in a Spanish place here in Frankfurt. It's, I forgot what the restaurant is called. It's very cute, Bodega. It's called Bodega. It's between Goethestraße and Frescas. It's a very cute little restaurant and the building is really cute because it's really, really old. It's like hundreds and hundreds of years old and it has like a very romantic, nice flair. So I got ready. I was wearing a white, white A-line skirt and a black top with cold shoulders, like cut out shoulders. And yeah, back in the time, this, this, this is important for the story. Back in the time, I used to wear like a little, a little clip-on, clip-on ponytail, like this fake blonde, long clip-on thing. Ugh, I don't even know why I wore that. But anyways, I had a phase, you know, we had phases. So I wore that and buddy buzzes on my door. I open the door and I'm like, uh, I mean, I've seen him once before when we met, but I was just like, oh, he was so hot. He was so cute. And um, I'll never forget it. He was like, there's like stairs that go up to my flat. And he was just like leaning like that on the stairs and just looking at me. And I was like, oh my God, I melted. I was like, and then I got nervous. I'm like, oh, how are you? How are you doing? Do, 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 do. And that's when I knew I liked him. And I really liked him. Mm. And a little side note, it's, it was a very, um, it was a very stressful day for me because the night before I went to a club in Frankfurt. I don't want to mention which one. And unfortunately I got Rohypnol in my glass which is a date rape drug. And I managed to notice it quickly before I completely passed out. I didn't feel well. And my friend and I took a cab home and I went to bed and I felt so miserable. I was crying and like just thinking about the date with this guy, Andy, gave me hope for the day, you know? So that was the night before. And then when I saw him, I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, so then we walked to the bodega and I was, of course, talking 100 miles an hour. And then we got there and they sat us in this really cute romantic table. And I ordered a glass of rosé to take off the edge, you know, to calm my nerves down. And I was so hungry because I didn't, didn't eat anything all day. So Buddy here orders a huge, <laughs> I ordered a huge plate with Monchego cheese and meat and vegetables. And like, as if that was not enough, I ordered an additional plate with um, Serrano sandwiches, 
So you could imagine, like, he didn't order anything. He's like, oh, I ate already. So you could imagine a huge plate like this and sandwiches. And when they brought it, I was like, I was just shameless. I was just stuffing my face, just stuffing, stuffing every corner I had in my mouth. And he was actually impressed. He's like, oh, wow, you have a good, healthy appetite. That's nice. I'm like, like with, with half of a Monchego falling out of my mouth. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to eat a lot. And then he told me something interesting. He's like, yeah, usually girls don't order so much on first dates. Like they eat a salad or they eat something like that, you know. And that's another tip I could give you guys. Do not change what you order when you're on a date with someone. If you want to have a steak or if you want to have pasta, even if it's messy to eat, like a pasta, you have to roll it, roll it, and like get sauce all over your face. Like, don't change what you would normally order. You know, just order what you want to order and eat, eat, eat. Because guys like women who eat a lot, because it's kind of like, um, it goes back to the prehistoric times, you know? It's like in our DNA, a woman who eats well, has a body that's well nourished, and then has round hips that are well nourished, and the round hips are used to birth a baby. So it's kind of like written in their DNA, oh, she eats a lot, she's a good woman. All right, I think that was one of my points. Yeah, that was one of my points. So yeah, so we were sitting eating at the restaurant and then I just guzzled down the first rosé and then I was like, okay, now I'm totally chilled. Now I'm totally chilled. And then he said, like, he gave me a disclaimer. He's like, yeah, it's eight o'clock now, but I made, like, I have to meet my friends at 11. We're going to a party. It was the ABS party in Frankfurt. They were, they were really cool, these parties. And um, he's like, yeah, so I only have three hours. I'm like, oh, that's okay, that's fine. But honestly, I really wanted to go with him. But, you know, we just, like, literally are, like, 15 minutes together into this date. So then he started drinking. And then out of nowhere, like, <laughs> this guy comes, this Spanish guy a kind of a Spanish grandpa with his huge guitar and starts like serenading us in Spanish. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, oh my God, this is so romantic. And then this guy looking at me, I have to also say that my husband is seven years younger. He's tall and blonde and has green eyes. And like the Spanish grandpa is playing and this guy is looking at me. I almost like choked on my Monchego. I was like, you know, it was so like, I don't know, it was like a fairy tale. And then um, we kept on drinking. I ordered my second glass of wine and I was careful not to order too much wine because I also noticed in my past, like another tip for you girls, like if you drink too much on the first date, you know, like alcohol pretty much like we lose our inhibitions, you know? So like, we do stuff that we usually wouldn't do. We say stuff that we usually wouldn't say. And I had experiences where I would do or say stuff that I would regret. So I have a drink or two, but definitely don't get drunk. Um, yeah, I broke that rule later, but that's later into the date. So bear with me. So the guy's like serenading us. There's like this amazing hot man. And then all of a sudden, like a whole bunch of people come and like the room is full. And these two couples sit beside us and they're kind of looking at us the whole time. And uh, they ask us, they're like, oh, how long have you been together for? You look like you're a happily married couple. And we're like, oh, and then we lied. I think Andy lied. He's like, Oh, we're together for six months. Or I think it was my idea, I don't remember. And I'm like, oh, you look like you're together for years. I'm like, oh, yeah. Oh, I hope so. And then the craziest thing happened. My husband, well, my Andy back then, kissed me after two hours into the date. 
like that guy, I don't know, he has like balls of steel, but um, he told me what I actually did to make him kiss me and I did not know that. So this is a very big tip for you girls. Basically, he told me I gave him the eye, eye, lip thing. And what that is, is you look into the left eye, you look into the right eye, and then you look at the lips and just kind of give him a smile like that, maybe a little raised eyebrow. Wait, let me do it closer. So, eye, eye, lips. Eye, eye, lips. Apparently he said that works. I don't know. I don't know. Either that works or that guy just jumped on me. But, oh my God. Oh my God, that kiss. He kisses so well. I like melted, melted. Yeah, and I was like, oh my God, I hope he takes me to the thing with his friends, to the party, I hope so, I hope so. And so, yeah, and then we, uh, we had a shot that was, <laughs> that was my fault because I'm like, shots, shots, shots. You know, I'm North American, you know, we need our shots, you know. And I'm like, in German you say, ich bin kein Kind von Traurigkeit, means like, what does it actually mean? It means like, I think it literally translates to, I'm a rebel and I do crazy shit. So yeah, so I'm always like, I'm always, I'm always forcing people to drink shots. Yeah, so I made him do shots. And then like, it was getting close to 11. He looked at his watch and I'm like, please, 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 please invite me, please invite me. And he's like, oh yeah, it's 11, I have to meet my friends. Do you want to come with me? And I was like, yeah, yeah. You know, like I showed him my enthusiasm, which is actually not so embarrassing. You know how many people say like, stay cool, be calm, be like the queen, don't show him too much, don't give him too much. Nope, nope, nope. I'm totally against that. Like if you're excited and you're happy, show it. If you're like happy that he invites you somewhere, show it. If you're like, happy to be with him or if you want to flirt with him show it flirt you know don't be don't be too cold and don't be too hard to get like um it works on some guys but on the wrong guys the good guys don't want some girl who's too cold and hard to get so i made that experience that i just just was just excited and showed it to him and he was happy so he took me to the party we had fun we drank some more then Buddy got drunk, and he also got drunk, and it was, I think it was like 4 a.m., and he looked at me and he's like, oh, you know, my the last uh, train to Darmstadt is left, I don't know what to do. Usually that's like an excuse to sleep over, but I'm like, oh, you could stay at my place. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. And um, then I told him, I'm like, you could stay, you, but you're sleeping on the bed. You have to sleep on the bed. And he's like, yeah, of course, of course, I'm going to sleep on the bed, of course. So then, then we got ready for bed. I put on a t-shirt, <coughs> put on a t-shirt, and he took off his clothes for bed, and he stayed in his underwear. And my God, he had these red diesel boxer shorts like tight shorts and it was the most beautiful man wearing the most beautiful thing with his muscles and his green eyes he just stood there looking at me and then I was like about to say well yeah the couch is there and I'm like oh fuck it fuck it are oh, you gonna regret it you're gonna regret it because my motto was always like don't sleep with them on the first date do not sleep with them on the first date I was like, fuck, he's so hot, and I haven't had sex in a hundred years, you know. I don't do one night stands. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Okay, I'm just gonna cuddle with him, I'm just gonna make out with him, it's gonna be fine. So I'm like, okay, you know what, just come here, just come to bed with me, because the couch is not comfortable. And he jumped into the bed, and as soon as his body touched mine, I was gone. I was gone, I was gone, I was gone. We started kissing and then, well, you know what happened. And back to my little ponytail thingy. 
Sometimes men really don't notice everything. So when he was kissing me, when he was like on top of me, I like, I did like the fucking craziest maneuver. I like, I took my ponytail like this, I clipped it off, and then I went like this and I threw it to the other side, <laughs> to the other side of the room. And hopefully, like hoping that he would notice, like my hair was like this much shorter without the ponytail through it. Buddy doesn't notice anything. Doesn't notice anything. He touches my hair. He's like, you have such nice hair. And I was like, I just threw a meter of my hair to the other side of the room. Didn't notice it. And then, well, basically, you know, it happened. And um, to make a long story short, we woke up the next morning. He goes to my bathroom, walks by the hair on the floor, jumps up, and he's like, what? I didn't know you have a rat at home. <laughs> oh my God, I was like peeing in my pants. I was peeing. I'm like, that's not a rat. That's, a, that's the, 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 the fucking thing I was wearing on my hair yesterday. He's like, oh, really? I didn't notice it. I'm like, hmm, all right. So then he like saw the, the hair on the floor and he laughed. He laughed, you know, and I laughed. And I thought it was really fun because you know how sometimes you're embarrassed in front of a guy or you want everything to go perfectly and everything to go well, but well, don't. Things don't go perfectly and things don't always go well, but being honest and being real is much better than acting and trying to be cool. So then I was super scared that he like, you know, that he got what he wanted and then he would go home because I'm not into one night stands. And that was a huge, huge exception that I made. And I'm like, oh God, this guy turned me into a slut. Well, he didn't because I married him. So I technically did not have a one night stand. But anyway, so he comes back from the bathroom and he's like, do you want to watch a movie? And I was like, yes, yes, ka-ching. So we watched a movie until the afternoon. Uh, this was Saturday and I'm like, how am I going to keep this guy? How am I going to keep this guy in my flat? I got to keep this guy in my flat. I, I, I got to come up with shit, you know? And, um, I ordered sushi. I ordered the most expensive sushi that I have ordered ever ordered in my life. It was like, it came in this black box and there was like really cool stuff there, like really unique sushi. And um, yeah, I thought I would treat him because he paid for he paid for the food the night before and I think it's really nice if a man pays for the first date. I'm very traditional like that. Like I don't mind paying for the second date, but if a man decides to treat you on the first date, that's really nice. Let him do it. Don't say no, 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 let me pay for half or something like that. If he wants to treat you, let him treat you and then you could get the second dinner. So I bought the sushi and then we ate a lot and then we had a nap, we slept in the afternoon and then he woke up, we woke up and I'm like, oh my God, please don't let him go home, please don't let him go home, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm like, are you hungry? I could order some Thai food. And he's like, yeah, actually I am. And I was like, yes. You could always get a man with food, girls, always. Man and food, you have to know. If you could give a man food, buddy's going to stay. So, ordered some Thai and it was very late and he's like, do you mind if I sleep over again? I'm like, yes. I'm like, please sleep over as much as you want to. And then I'm like, I didn't make it into a secret. I'm like, I told him that I like him and I said, it's a pleasure having you here. So the next morning I attempted to cook for him. I usually do not cook. I do not cook well. Um, I mean, I can cook, but it's not my hobby. My hobby is eating. I, I love to eat, eat more than cook. So I made for him some food. I made for him a shakshuka and that's like eggs with onions and tomatoes and all kind of stuff. And he jokes until this day, he's so mean. He jokes that I was holding the knife backwards while I was cutting the tomatoes. I wasn't, the food was great. 
And then after he's, he told me, oh, by the way, I don't like tomatoes. And the whole fucking breakfast was like tomatoes and eggs. But being a nice boy that he is, he ate it. I'm like, oh, that's very sweet. And then, um, did we do something on Sunday? I think we literally did not leave the house. And then we were hanging out. Oh, we because it was winter, it was January, it was very, very cold. And then we were hanging out, watching some more stuff, eating, sleeping. And Andy left my house on Monday. Ooh, he stayed in my house for three days, three days, three days. That was the best first date ever. Stayed in my house for three days. And as soon as he left in the morning for work, um, I called my mom. I'm like, oh my God, mommy, I met the one. I met the one. I met the one. And she's like, oh, so um, how was your date? What did you, what did you do on the weekend? I'm like, oh, he was here the whole time in my house. And I have a Russian speaking mother. She's like, did you sleep with him? I'm like, yeah, I kind of did. Oh, no. Why you sleep with him? Why you know you don't have to sleep with a man on the first date? Very bad. He will not call you now? This is like a slut. Why you do? I'm like, shit, shit. She's right. She's right. She's right. Well, that was before I married Andy. I also thought, like, do not sleep with a guy on the first date. Usually, like, I still think that guys like the chase and sleeping on the first date is not the best, but it happens. And I was actually talking to a couple a few months ago that got married where they also slept on the first day together. So then I like hung up on my mom, like, mom, I don't need your bad vibes now. I hang up. And yeah. And then my mom calls back. She's like, how old is he? What does he look like? And then I told her he's like seven years younger. He's tall and blonde and stuff. And she's like, oh, you were right. You were right. Remember you said you believe in the fairy tale. Oh, I didn't believe you. The fairy tale is good. You were right. You were the very right, Galia. Молодец, молодец. So, a little bit about that. Um, my mom sat and had a talk with me um, because there was one part of my life where I was very, very desperate to find a guy. Everywhere I would go to, I would look in the clubs for men. I would like hunt for men, hunt for men. And it was like two years. And these two years that I was like desperate to find a man, no man looked at me. I didn't have dates. Nobody had an interest in me because I think men are like, they smell desperation. And I was like, super desperado. And then my mom was like, oh, you're too picky. You like the really, really cute guys because I like, I like pretty boys. So my mom was like, you want only pretty boy. Look at you, you are getting old. Why you look for pretty boy? You take a man, he will like you, he will be short. Bald, have a big belly, it's okay, you could take him, you need to get married, have family. Ну давай, take the old, short, bald man. I'm like, no, I'm not taking an old, short, bald man, I'm gonna have a tall, young, beautiful husband. And then my mom's like, oi, fey, I never have, I will never have grandchildren. Все, ужас, I will never have grandchildren. <laughs> and then I told her, I'm like, well, you see, I did it because I believe in fairy tales. And I really do believe in fairy tales. Like I always knew that I'm gonna have a handsome husband. I always knew that I'm gonna meet a guy that I like and that looks good. Because I have to be attracted to a guy, you know? Like I cannot kiss a guy or have sex with a guy or just be with someone that I'm not attracted to. Like maybe it sounds superficial, but for me, it's not. I'm a very aesthetic person and I like somebody who is pleasing for the eye. And I also like when other girls look at my husband and, and when they kind of check him out, I'm like, yeah, I did a good job. I have a hot man. So that's really nice. Well, I have to lower my shorts. <sighs> yeah, so to make a long story short, Mrs. Cray Cray over here, we went on a date two days later. We went on a date to a company party at Journal Frankfurt. They were having their New Year's party. And I introduced Andy to my editor-in-chief. I introduced him as my boyfriend on the second date. Oh, my God. Like, how crazy do you have to be? 
Like I think probably any other man would run away. But my husband is a psychologist and probably knows how to deal with crazy people. No, I'm kidding. Um, well, I'm a little crazy, but what woman isn't, right? <laughs> So he kind of like laughed it off and stuff. And then I'm like, oh, well, okay, take it slow, buddy. Take it slow, buddy. Um, oh, and I forgot to mention, I forgot to mention on our first date, when I got drunk, I told you guys not to get drunk. And I did at the club. I told him, you know, my wish is, like slurring, my, my wish is to uh, get married by 40. And I have a baby. And like, he, he was so cute, jokingly. Like, he looked in, at his watch. He's like, yeah, yeah, I think that's possible. I think we could do that. And then we laughed it out. Because, I mean, you don't have to do it on the second date or the first date or the fourth date. Or even like on the first week or month. Well, month would be okay. But you have to play with open cards. You have to tell him what you want. You have to tell him if you want to get married, if you want to have a family, if that's important to you, you have to tell him because you have to know what you're getting into. Like, for example, I had a friend that was dating a guy for half a year and at the end they broke up because apparently Buddy did not want to have children and she wanted to have children and she didn't tell him that in the beginning. They never talked about kids for half a year. And then like, he broke up with her and then she was devastated. So, guys, please, please, please listen to me. Um, say it right up. Say it straight up. I would say it in like a week or a month, you know, like I did it on the first date, which is crazy. But say what you want. Say you want to get married and say that you want to have a kid. Like, talk about your end game and yeah, see if you have that in common. It's very important. Yeah, so that was the date with my husband. Um, oh yeah, and you know what you know what he did? Oh my God, I was so angry at him. On our first date, he invited me to his birthday, which was the week after. And then in the morning, Buddy disinvited me to his birthday. I was so pissed at him. I'm like, what the fuck? You invite me and then you disinvite me. Well, I didn't say that. I, I was just like, you know, complaining to a friend. I'm like, what kind of man is that? Why don't you want to have me at your birthday party? And like, usually I would be so bitchy about it. And I would be like, fuck this guy. I'm not dating him anymore. But I was mature about it. I was like, okay, there must be a reason. Fine. Still didn't forgive him for that, you know, but yeah. But, 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 mm. He explained to me that a lot of his friends and family are there and it's a little bit too soon. Like he will have to introduce me to everyone and stuff. It's a little bit too soon. But he did end up introducing me to his family literally like a month later. So it was nice. Um, I made him buy me a present because of that. You know, I have Russian jeans. I'm like, you know what, buddy? That was, that was painful shit. You're going to buy me a present for that. And he was like, okay, okay. So yeah, he bought me a present. Yeah, so that was pretty much the sample of a good date that ended up in marriage. Now I have an example of a bad date. About a year before I met my husband, I went on a date with a guy that I met on Tinder. I was on Tinder for a long time, for like a year, I think. And I had some great dates on Tinder. I had great dates and I had not so great dates. Um, so this guy was a doctor, actually a surgeon in a big hospital here in Germany, uh, in Frankfurt. I'm not going to mention which one. And um, seemed like a nice, decent guy. But when we got to the restaurant, the... The waitress who was serving us was very good looking. Even I, like, I was even looking at her and I was like, wow, she's gorgeous, you know. So Buddy kept on turning around like this, kept on looking at her and stuff and kept on like winking to her and flirting with her while I was like literally sitting across from him and I saw it. And then I went to the bathroom and when I was coming back from the bathroom, I saw him giving her his number and she was like, yeah, la, la, 
la la la, sure, I'll call you. Like I heard, I was close enough. She's like, I'll call you, thanks. And then she gave him, she hugged him and gave him a kiss on the cheek. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, not again, fucking Tinder. So then I came back to the table and I was like, oh, what was that? And then he didn't even, he didn't even hide it. He's like, oh, that was the waitress. I gave her my number. I think she's very cute. I'm like, eh, okay, uh, okay. And let's just pretend that that's normal where like nobody's addressing the elephant in the room. So after the date, he drove me home and Buddy had the nerves to say, so Galia, when are we meeting for the second date? He took out his phone. He's like, oh, I have time next week. And I'm like, uh, we're not meeting on the second date. Oh, um, hell no. Who knows what you're going to flirt with next time? You know, maybe you're going to like pick up like, like the grandma on the way. I don't know. Like you're crazy. So that was an example of a bad date. So first dates can sometimes be horrible. You could be nervous. They could be nerve wracking, but First dates are also nice because you get to meet someone new and you get to might meet your next future partner. Let's see what else I made some notes. Went out with the schmuck who was flirting with the waitress. Yeah, about the schmuck I told you. This I told you. I'm doing a little quick cut because I forgot to mention this. Compliments. Men love compliments just like we do. So if you see that he's wearing a nice shirt or if he did something nice, or he looks good or something, give him a little compliment. Compliments go a long, long way. I always compliment my husband and he just makes him feel good. And um, yeah, yeah, just like you like it, they like it too. So compliment him. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Another thing I wanted to say about not having expectations in Tinder, like when I Tindered, there used to be only photos on Tinder. I'm not sure if they have like videos now or not. Like, I'm not sure how they do it, but um, photos are like, photos could be retouched and photos are usually made from the front. You know, like take my nose, for example, from the front, it looks very nice and slim. But when I turn around, I got a fucking big ass honker. My nose is huge, look, huge ass nose. I have to say, this nose didn't ever stop me from getting good dates and hot men, but still, the nose is big. So, yeah, don't, don't have such high expectations because it might be that the guy looks different than his Tinder profile and people in 3D look different than um, on their photos. So don't have expectations and rather be pleasantly surprised. Sit straight, I, I wrote that as a point, sit straight. I have a problem with that, but you know, I'm like, <laughs> sitting like this. But a woman who kind of sits straight at the table, I think it's very nice. It gives you an aura of confidence, of strength. It makes you, it makes you look very gracious and elegant, and it's just pretty. It looks good, and I think guys like that. Eat a lot, oh yeah, or like you usually do. This I said. Order whatever you want. Then the eye thing, left eye, right eye, mouth. I said that. And last of all, last but not least, tell him a funny story. I notice that gets guys all the time. Tell him some kind of funny story that happened to you. Even if it's embarrassing, it doesn't matter. Like some funny embarrassing story because guys love to laugh, girls like, love to laugh. So a funny story. And yeah, that's it. That's all I could think of now for first dates. Enjoy, have fun, and don't forget to send me your fishiest questions. And then I will put, I will put all the fishiest questions in the fish. Um, I will write your question on a blank piece of paper. And for my next episode, I will fish it out. So that's that, my friends. Thank you very much for listening. Oh, shiza. Oh, yeah, the fish almost fell. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for giving me your time and attention. Love you all and see you 
next time on Yes, No, Maybe. Mwah. Bye.